DJ Pro 5.0 update gave us so many amazing new features. Only problem is some of them might be hard to find. So in this video, I'm going to show you where all of them are. So number one is the waveforms. We got a whole new revamped waveforms. They made them really beautiful. So here is how you can change them and edit them, which is one of the biggest updates. So over here, you see on this empty deck, we have this one drop down menu and we have this two drop down menu. When you press this, this was already here. You had slice, skip, you could turn the joggles on and off. You could change the orientation of your waveform. What's new is instead of dark mode, they call it high contrast mode. So basically instead of it being the same color, it makes it like a really dark black color that makes it easier to see and, uh, and it, the contrast is better. So I would recommend keeping it on that, but it's not a new feature. It just called something different. Next is over here. So you might think you might press these drop down menus to get to the beat grid editor, but you actually have to press this pencil. So it might be hard to see when the waveforms are there. You can see it a little bit better when the waveforms aren't there. So we press this pencil button and now we have the option we could set the downbeat. So if you want to edit where the downbeat is, if the, if the AI messed up the beat grid, then you could edit it that way. And then to get to this menu, you press show editor and now we have a full editor. We could double, we can, we can half the BPM. We have a full BPM control. You could set it from straight to dynamic. And then we have set forward and back. So this is the new screen where you can really customize and edit these beat grids. And it's truly amazing. People have been asking about this for a while, but there is another way to get to this screen without going through the waveforms. And that is if we go over here to the second one where our cue points are, to down here, our cue points, we have cue, pitch cue, and then slice. There's no drop down menu uh, right now, but if we press the slice, then we get this drop down menu. And then now we can go to skip. I talked about that. That's not a, that's not a new feature, but down here, edit grid. This is how you get to that same screen we were just on through the waveforms. So if you want to do it that way, you can. And this feature is not new, but if you want to see these beautiful waveforms in a full screen view, if you press whichever one you have highlighted, if you press it again, you get a full waveform view. Now we have the new amazing feature, which is the crossfader effects. So in order to turn that on, we're going to press the drop down menu and then we're going to turn it on. And annoyingly, it just minimizes the menu. I think that if you if you plan on turning this feature on, after you turn it on, you're gonna wanna choose which one you're using. So you have to press it again. So if that's happening to you, that's just the way it is. And then now you may be asking yourself, why do mine look different? Why don't I have all of these crossfader effects? It depends on what device you have. Some devices don't have enough processing power, I believe, to use these narrow mix transitions. So if you don't see these here, it's because of your device. It's not because of, of the app. So just keep that in mind. And then down here, it might be hard to see, but if you scroll all the way down, you could turn tempo blend on and off, and then you could adjust how many bars that the transition does. And then mix now is not auto mix. It's just going to move the crossfitter from the left to the right for you. Another thing is the whole menu has changed. Instead of having the strip menu that we're used to, we get a new menu. So you press the middle button, that's the same, but this whole thing is different. I think it's easier. It's, it's going to work better once they add more stuff to it. I believe that's why they did it this way. So you can keep scrolling, but this is how you change your different view modes. And then record is over here. It's the same record as we're used to. You just press it over there. Auto mix is over here. So you could turn auto mix on from any view mode and they got rid of the ridiculous, um, hand mixing thing with the uh, augmented reality or whatever. I'm pretty sure nobody used it. So I'm kind of happy to see that they just gave up on it and got rid of it. Maybe when the technology improves, we might get it back. But for now it's gone. So don't look for it. So now let's go to one deck mode. So now here in one deck mode, it looks a little bit different. This is to organize your tracks. And the new thing that they added was over here, you could start and stop auto mix. So wherever you select to start and stop, Every time you have auto mix on, it's going to start and stop there. I think it's an awesome feature. You could kind of program your own pre-recorded sets by using it if you order your playlist right. 
And then over here we had we could set our cue points. And then this drop down menu is new, I believe. And then you could go from cue points, loops, and then beat grid, and you could get a really fine edit of the beat grid. So if you wanna get really creative and really edit your beat grid, then you can do it in one deck mode. And now to get to your settings, down here you have modes, you have DJ school, these are DJ lessons. Hopefully one day I will be in that section. And then our settings are over here. So all the way to the right are our, our settings. Another thing down here is if you go into your settings, go to advanced, you could see how much percent of the quality you're getting with Neuromix. So I am getting 80%. I'm on that iPad Pro from 2018. I believe you have the brand new iPad or something with the M2 chip, then it'll be 100%. Uh, let me know if yours is any higher or lower, but mine is 80% with the iPad Pro. And then MIDI device is the same. You could see where uh, what controllers are supported. You could go to the website and see all of the controllers there. They made it look a little bit nicer, nicer in this menu section. So check out this video up here to see my opinion of the best controllers for the iPad this year.